Hey guys, Hitman89 here. I hope you're doing great. Last week we had my Dragon's Dogma 2 review. Check it out if you're interested or if you want to have a good laugh because I always try and make my reviews funny. But today you better have a decent GPU because we're going to be looking at the 12 best PC games to play right now. I picked the best ones we had in 2024 so far and also a couple of ones from 2023. Without further ado, let's have a look at the first game. Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition just landed on PC and it was already beautiful on PS5 but now it looks even more breathtaking. Identifying your enemy's weak spots and shooting them with your arrows or hitting them using melee attacks feels great. I prefer melee so that's where I put all my skill points but both approaches are perfectly viable. You can explore this stunning world on foot or you could hack a machine and turn it into your personal mount. The only thing I really don't like is how wonky the climbing and jumping is. So if you don't feel like playing a hairy big headed chick then you might want to check out the second game on my list. A lot of people really like Pal World, and if you're into Pokemon and all that kind of stuff, then you should get it too. But I prefer Enshrouded, because it's not just a survival game, it's also an open world action RPG, and I love those. I've been playing it since day one with my brother. We pretty much finished all the available quests, but the game is in early access, and technically, it doesn't have an ending yet. What it actually has though is a decent amount of bugs. In Shrouded's voxel based world is super fun to explore since you can dig holes everywhere and destroy almost everything. The combat system is decent as well and the new update improved a lot of stuff and basically added dungeons. So I really recommend you give this game a shot, especially with a friend that you can annoy. At least that's what I do to my brother every time we play. <laughs> Are you ready for the next game? Ready or not, yeah that's what the game's called. Okay, I'll stop with the shitty jokes. Ready or Not is a realistic tactical FPS that supports up to 5 players in co-op. I played it solo with bots, they can be really dumb at times, but I'm not well placed to shit on them, cause I really suck at this game. I get too impatient and instead of planning my moves and advancing carefully, I rush in without the reflexes to back it up, so I die in a couple of seconds and I get my teammates shot too. Let's just move on to the next one. Instead of Diablo 4, you might wanna consider Last Epoch. It's far from being perfect, I mean it only took me two minutes to see the first bug but it's so much fun plus all the bugs i had so far were either animations not playing properly or corpses stuck in the air like this phoenix here so nothing game breaking oh and you can play offline which in 2024 is considered awesome <laughs> Being able to respec by despecializing a skill or by simply removing skill points is an excellent mechanic. It makes the gameplay more flexible and allows you to try out different builds. In my opinion, Last Epoch is extremely underrated. Too bad you can't customize your character's appearance though. Next, we have another game that left early access this year. First time I played Sons of the Forest, I couldn't even last two days. I almost starved to death, but I ended up killing one of those forest dudes, and as I was carrying its corpse back to my camp, I completely forgot about the traps I had set up and I got impaled on my own sticks. My second run though, it went a lot better. I started crafting stuff and every now and then I would grab one of those cannibals, chop them to pieces and eat their ass. I mean literally, just to show them who's the real cannibal. I really like the building system. You can pick a template from your guidebook or you could just build something directly in game, piece by piece and I found it more interesting that way. Moving on to the next game, I'm currently on my third Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough and usually I never do that. I play a game, beat it, uninstall it and never look back. But Baldur's Gate 3 has likable characters, awesome voice acting and many endings. The freedom and game mechanics here allow you to have an insane number of approaches and outcomes. So after playing a barbarian who just picks people up and throws them off cliffs, I decided to go with the gnome bard who looks like he has a plant growing on his head. Plus every fight, before I end my turn, I play the loot a little bit just to annoy the shit out of my brother. In all seriousness now, if you still haven't played Baldur's Gate 3, you're missing out. Now the seventh game on my list is completely different. Pacific Drive is quite unique. It's a survival game that takes you on a road trip in a world full of anomalies. And that's your only enemy in this game, cause there's no combat. Playing Pacific Drive feels like you're working as a mechanic in Chernobyl. Cause you gotta fix your car, fuel it, look for spare parts, scraps and other vital resources so you can keep going. And I know it might not appeal to everyone, but it's very underrated and if you like games with an immersive atmosphere, you'll most likely love this one. At number 8 we have Dragon's Dogma 2, but not at full price and I'll tell you why. 
The game is incredibly addictive, exploring this beautiful world and fighting all kinds of monsters is very enjoyable, but it runs like shit and it's full of bugs too. Maybe by the time you watch this video the game will be fixed though. I doubt it. So that's why you should wait a little bit for some more patches and possibly a discount. It's still one of my favorite games this year. If you want to find out more about it, check out my full review. You'll find the link in the description and also at the end of the video. Now let's have a look at a multiplayer game for a change. Helldivers 2 is a blast, even with randoms. This third person online shooter will definitely remind you of Starship Troopers, except alongside the giant bugs, you'll also have to deal with robots. Oh, and your teammates, cause those bitches will most likely kill you by mistake, if you know what I mean. So if you're into extraction shooters, definitely give this one a shot. Keep in mind the game still occasionally crashes though. The next one on my list doesn't crash, but it could set your PC on fire. Alan Wake 2 is very demanding, but at least it's one of the best looking games ever. And it's far from being a classic survival horror game, cause it's got such a unique presentation and art direction. When you play as Saga Anderson, you investigate, look for clues and solve cases. But when you're Alan Wake, you actually get to alter locations by rewriting the story. By the way, I'm glad they're using the same engine to remake Max Payne 1 and 2. Hopefully, it'll look insane. So if you haven't upgraded your PC yet, get ready to sell a kidney or an eyeball. <laughs> After two years in early access, v Ryzen is finally getting a full release May 8th. This one is for those of you who want a Diablo-like game where you play as a vampire, who chops wood in broad daylight. <laughs> Seriously though, you can't stay under the sun for too long or you'll burn. Anyway, you'll be crafting all kinds of tools and gear and you'll also have to build a castle so you can live your best vampire life. It's not really my cup of tea, but a lot of people seem to love it. Let me know if you're one of them. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink caught me off guard, cause I'm not an anime fan and I'm not that into these games, but I really like this one. It takes about an hour to get going, so keep that in mind, but starting from chapter 2, it's a blast. The art style kinda reminded me of Dragon Quest, which is another game I love, but the combat system here is super dynamic. You can sync up attacks with your teammates and the special attack looks awesome, plus it's one of the rare RPGs that has multiplayer. You can redo boss fights and side missions in co-op and that's pretty sweet. Oh and it's got big titties, so it's a must have. <laughs> and that's gonna be it for the best PC games to play right now. I've included a couple of underrated games, so hopefully everyone will find something they like. I'll be making a 2024 games only video in a couple of months so if you like this one please consider subscribing i also make game reviews sometimes day one sometimes a couple of weeks after they came out but most of the time i tend to pick games that released in a bad state and i review them six months sometimes a year or two later to see if they improved anyway please don't forget to support the channel with a thumbs up it would be heavily appreciated it's been hitman 89 see you guys very soon I will not stop, I'm pretend To get to the top, yeah, you must be rare Got a bike, hey